Psalm chapter 1 says, those who meditate on God's word, those who let it shape their lives, flourish. Today we're going to look at one of the central things that the word of God says. Perhaps no truth in scripture is more affirmed than this in the Bible God is in control. God is almighty. We, even if we're a great king like Nebuchadnezzar, we are not the almighty one. And perhaps the most vivid story showing this truth is in Daniel chapter 4. The great king Nebuchadnezzar and his father, established the Babylonian Empire uh, from present-day Iraq almost to Egypt. Jerusalem was one of the many cities that they conquered. They took many captive in exile to Babylon. His architectural works were included in the seven wonders of the ancient world. Uh, one was the Hanging Gardens Story goes, his wife longed for the mountains of her childhood home, so he built her one. Daniel chapter 4 describes the dream that the king had one night and his conversation with Daniel, one of these exiles from Jerusalem who had become a valued advisor to the king. He warned the king as they talked about this dream not to view himself as the Almighty. But the king didn't heed the warning, and one day he was walking on the roof of his royal palace. Uh, is not this the great Babylon that I have built with my power and the glory of my majesty? And he fell into literal megalomania <laughs> went insane for for seven years at the end of those seven years nebuchadnezzar says let's see i <clears throat> did i yeah sorry i praised um <clears throat> At the end of those seven years, Nebuchadnezzar says, I looked up to heaven, my sanity returned. In verse 34, I praised and worshiped the Most High. His rule is everlasting. His kingdom is eternal. All the people on the earth are nothing compared to him. He does as he pleases. No one can stop him. All through the Bible, it's clear that that is who God is. God is the Lord God, the Almighty. For instance, uh, Revelation chapter 4. Literally hundreds of places in the Bible refer to God as the Almighty. And many places speak of God as the ruler of all things. God is so thoroughly in control that the Apostle Paul boldly says, in his uh, breathless description of God in Ephesians chapter 1, God makes everything work out according to his plan. God not only has the power to intervene, but he does continually intervene. Proverbs chapter 6 uh, chapter 16, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Another story illustrating this in Genesis chapter 37, Joseph's brothers in jealousy sold him into slavery in Egypt. And what does Joseph tell his brothers many years later in Genesis chapter 45? He says, God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth. 
to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. As uh, Twyla Paris wrote and sang a couple decades ago, God is in control. We believe that his children will not be forsaken. God is in control. We choose to remember and not be shaken. Or do we believe that? Some protest. God is in control. Can't be right. For instance... What about free will? We're sure that God gives us free will and God controlling everything doesn't seem to fit in with that. Our brain can't see both of those as true. Yet scripture says both are true. And I believe that both can be true because I'm okay with mystery. I'm okay with the idea that ultimate reality is something bigger than what my mind can grasp, bigger than what I can wrap it, wrap my brain around. In fact, I'm going to give a little quick case that it's actually logical to expect that our brains will face apparent contradictions when we talk about God. Um, by definition, a cube has all right angles. Is that correct? Yep, that is. And um, let's see. This is the true sketch of a cube, right? <laughs> but it doesn't have all right angles uh, because when you try to describe something that's three-dimensional on just two dimensions, like a flat screen, you run into apparent contradiction. Well, God and his actions are at least a couple dimensions higher than our descriptions of him. So it's logical to expect that there will be some apparent contradictions, some mystery. There's another objection that is thrown to this belief that God is in control, and that is, what about evil and suffering? An all-good God who is strong enough to be in control would surely choose to remove all suffering, right? But suffering continues, so God must not be in control. And that hits us with a lot of emotional force it has a lot of power but <laughs> it actually does not have logical force let me show you uh, among philosophers in the last i don't know 40 years they've agreed the question of evil no longer disproves god the existence of god yes a good God who is in control would remove all pointless suffering. But how do we know when suffering is actually pointless? Tim Keller uh, wrote an article for The Atlantic. Uh, it was just posted a week ago. So this is fresh. Uh, last summer, he found out he has pancreatic cancer which is one of the most devastating, difficult to treat cancer. Uh, he's going to be on chemo the rest of his life, rest of his surely shortened life. And he writes in this article about how his beliefs about God's care, you know, he's a preacher, uh, he's preached on that. Uh, his beliefs about the resurrection, he's preached many Easter sermons, many, many funeral messages, says those beliefs have had to become life-gripping truths for him, or else he says they're useless. 
And he also, in this article in the Atlantic, he addresses people who say that suffering makes faith in God impossible. He writes, if there is a God great enough to merit your anger over the suffering you witness or you endure, then there is a God great enough to have reasons for allowing it that you can't detect. It may seem pointless, but it may not be if you would have a brain like God's. I fully believe, as Scripture says, that God is in control of our world. At least I say that I fully believe it in my head. Um, do I always fully believe it in my being? Do I actually live that way? Do I, do I let that biblical truth shape my life? Psalm chapter 1, as I do, I'm going to begin to flourish. Like that tree planted by the living waters the, that brings forth its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. Here. The more I trust that God is in control, the less destructive anger that I have. Anger comes when I try to control my world and something crossed the, the Almighty, wouldn't let me do what I say should happen. But when I deeply know God is in control, then there's a whole different attitude. Now when someone does something unjust, something that I think they should never have done, I say, God, this is your world, and you're in charge. And God might have me as his servant busy removing that evil, changing the things in the world that need changing, like bringing justice to the poor. That's what the prophet Daniel said to, um, <clears throat> said to King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, Dawn started reading in verse 29, verse 27, Daniel says to King Nebuchadnezzar, renounce your sins and do what is right. Break from your wicked past and be kind to the oppressed. And I will feel angry when things that are wrong don't change, when powerful people are still oppressing the poor. But along with the energy of that anger will be a sense of rest because it doesn't all rest on my shoulders. I'm not God. God is the Almighty. Also, the more that I trust God, the less feelings of despair I have. Despair is when we give up when someone or some situation won't let us bring about what we want instead of redoubling our efforts as in anger we we give up my back is not strong enough it's useless that i try to make things be good yes it is futile for us to try to control everything but guess what god is in control All we have to do is what the Almighty tells us to do. And as we begin to do that, at some point, we will see what the Almighty, what the all-loving God is up to. Further, <clears throat> I'll do less complaining. Uh, and it has various forms. Sometimes it's self-pity. Sometimes it's envy. Complaining says... But I was supposed to decide what happens. And this is not what I ordered at all. And also, the more I trust that God is in control, the less anxious fear. When I take it upon myself to be in control of the world, to guarantee my well-being, then fear 
enters in. I'm finite. I'm limited. I might fail and I know it. So I should fear if I'm the one that needs to be in control. But why not say, God, you are controlling the world. You won't fail. You won't run out of power. So I'll do what you tell me to do and I'll leave the rest in your hands. Indeed, there is incredible good that comes from us having faith that our almighty, all-loving God is in control. In fact, you would almost think that we humans were designed to live with that idea, with that faith. 